Okay, our, our next two talks are uh, pre-recorded. Uh, the first one will be from Arunalok Chakravarti, who is the now the outgoing president of ISHAM, um, effective the meeting, which is in about um, a week or two. John Perfect will be taking over his role as president, uh, president um, of that organization. ISHAM is an international group um, and um, stands for the International Society of Human and Animal Mycology. Anyway, so uh, this talk is about ways in which MSG, ERC, and ISHIM can collaborate. Good morning to you all. Uh, I'm Ornalu Chakravarti from India. I've been given a very interesting topic, the collaboration which is required between the ISHAM and MSG, ERC. The question comes, why we need this collaboration? And then how to go for this collaboration? I would say, that the concern of the human fungal infection is of recent origin. Since the 80s, when there is the AIDS, transplantation, immunosuppression, all this came. But within short time, you see, it produced a formidable challenge. Because of its high magnitude, we are seeing new host susceptibility. That means the susceptible host spectrum is increasing. We are seeing new agents causing the disease. You see, it's still very difficult to diagnose, especially invasive fungal disease, and it's very difficult to manage. And there is several problems, mainly with these human fungal infection challenges. First important thing is that people prefer usually the empiric therapy. So how you are taking the effort in case of diagnosis can be determined by the ratio of empirical therapy versus the targeted therapy. Second important issue is that you have to believe that fungal infection exists in your patient group. Then only you can be able to diagnose these cases. I would say the different journals has emphasized this issue of the fungi. Nature Microbiology in 2017 mentioned stop neglecting fungi because nearly 1.6 million people die annually because of fungal disease. Last year, Scientific American on their front page mentions this next deadly plague because of fungal disease. And this month issue of National Geographic also mentioned the same thing. Humans are not prepared for a pandemic caused by fungi. Friends, though these issues have been highlighted by different journals, but with the administrator, in case of the doctors and even the funding agency, nobody was paying so much attention. They were in slumber. Some good thing happened, though it had affected so many people, but at least they have started wake up after this multi-drug resistant candida oris entry in the hospital and big outbreak which happened, especially in India, that is the COVID-19 associated mucormycosis. So, in case of these three determinants of epidemiology, whether host, fungus, and environment, all these are affected by this global warming. And of course, the human behavior and our medical management. We are seeing new risk groups. We are seeing more immunosuppression. We are seeing immune-modifying drugs. Similarly, the fungus, which they are not liking human body, they started getting adopted and because of that, they started producing human infection. Similar things happening in the environment. And if you look into the developing country, where 77% of the Earth's population live, there the challenges is much higher because of high burden, distinct epidemiology, and there is limited awareness. There is low resource allocation in case of fungal disease, and public health response is very rare. Antifungal drugs, availability and affordability is a big issue, and research is also very limited. So to know the ground reality, we did a study in case of Asia, seven countries, specifically the Asian Fungal Working Group conducted this study, which showed other than small conventional technique, in case of whether it is MALDI or in case of your non-culture-based diagnostics, Hardly it is available. 
Bitter did you can 10%, Galactumana even 23%. This was the same picture which have been observed in case of the Latin America, especially South American countries. It has shown other than crypto antigen and to certain extent the galactomana, rest of the histoplasma antigen detection or even case of the beta ducan maldi, everything is not available. Forgetting not only this developing country, even in developed country like UK when this has been surveyed, yes, maldi is present in 67% of the laboratories, but you see beta ducan galactomana, these are even less than 25%. We also had surveyed the clinical doctors who are managing fungal infection. First important thing which you have observed, 63% had no formal training in medical microbiology. And they hardly get a chance for diagnosis. That's why they only see two to four proven cases of invasive fungal disease. Mostly they are managing the patient empirically because there is not the diagnostic test are available. Even when they are trying to give the therapy, 80% mentioned that they could not give the specific therapy which they want to give because patient could not afford. And even there is a study in India, this is a multi-center study, which had shown that 25% patient could not afford to complete the therapy in mucormycosis. So everyone is wanting training course. Everyone is wanting there should be institutional and national guidelines in that perspective. Even in case of the Africa, the situation is even worse, especially in case of availability of the drugs. In case of diagnostic, the problem remains the same. But look at this, fluconazole, only drug which is available in 90% of the country. Amputation B deoxycholate, only 50%. Forget about this echinocandine, which is hardly available. Even in case of these triazoles like voriconazole and prosaconazole, which is not available in most of the countries. So, though this human fungal infection has put a big challenge, we are in a crossroad. Because at one end, we are seeing there are outbreaks. And other side, we are seeing the change in case of the fungal epidemiology. And on the top of that, there is gap in diagnostic facility and awareness problem. So in this situation, in this depressing situation, I am seeing light at the end of the tunnel because these international societies, at least they are doing the collaboration. That is very important. When the government is not doing anything, the role of this international society for advocacy becoming very important issue. Look at this advocacy has helped how. In case of neglected tropical disease in WHO, mycetum and chromoblastomycosis has been recognized, and there is serious attempt to make paracoxy, thalamycosis, fungal keratitis in the sporo to make it neglected tropical disease. There was hardly any test or drug available in the essential drug list or essential diagnostic list. With this advocacy, there are several tests now included, several antifungal drugs are included in the essential medicine list. I know it's so difficult to have a exclusive fungal program. So there is also an advocacy required if we can piggyback on the already having national program like HIV, TB, blindness control program. So we need training. We need mycology laboratory development. We need antifungal drugs and we need research, especially those where these are pro uh, disproportionately affect the world's poor. The good aspect is that look at the map. Every corner of the world, there is some amount of activities there by these international societies. Our ISHAM is the worldwide organization and the aim of ISHAM is to facilitate the exchange of ideas, to publish journal, to organize the International Congress. So in exchange of ideas to expand it, different working group had been recognized. Young Mission program is a very important issue. Now, what we have added in last three, four years, what we have expanded in the educational and training, we have brought the research and global guideline program. We have also did the networking and global outreach. 
All of these activities we are doing collaborating with the others, like especially with the European Conference on Medical Mycology and also Global Action Fund for Fungal Infection. You can see because of our activity in case of Asian Fungal Working Group, over the few years, we could train nearly 2,500 clinician microbiologists and researchers. And also, this is hands-on training which we have done. Also, we have conducted the research and surveillance, especially these are the mapping of the fungal disease we tried in Asian country. Looking at the success of this, now we have developed two new regional working groups. One in case of the Africa, that is the, Latin, that is the African fungal working group, and then another is in case of Latin America, that is with Infocus Latin. In Africa, Pan-African Fungal Working Group, our aim is to network with the mycology expert to do a goal with to organize and engage African leaders in the field of mycology. And also to develop the educational program for capacity building and encourage country initiative to develop clinical guidelines. Finally, with the ECMM and ISHAM, to develop the one world, one guideline theory. Similarly, in case of the Infocus, you can see that they are organ they were organizing the conference, they will be organizing the conferences. But now they have also started doing short duration regional perceptorship program. They are facilitating the networking. They are trying to develop local and regional guidelines and recognition of the neglected fungal disease. Over the years, Isham is trying to build up this aspect by funding the defined meeting, workshop, especially this time we have funded well to Guffy and also young programs which have been there. We generally have conferences every three years. In between these three years, what we plan is the partnering with the regional conferences, like with InfoCuts, we had done in case of the Salvador in Brazil. You know, this would help it tremendously, where usually the people are finding it difficult to reach a distant place for the International Congress. And in this partnership, the, region, the experts can come to those regions and can have this particular meeting where the uh, people can learn from the expert. Similarly, we did it in case of the Asia, that is the Isham Asia 2021 program. We have also uh, finalize some of the country ambassador so that it can interface between the Isham and national guidelines. Young Isham program is very important for us because we are trying to go through these young people that define their, uh, their aspiration which need to be resolved. We have the society to journals and recently what we could do is that we started having this Isham laboratory e-course. This is a twin module e-course, and this is being accredited by the European Society. Any participants who goes to this program and finally appear the exam, they can receive the certificate. This program is completely free to the Isham members and others have to pay, but I really encourage everyone to become Isham member. And our uh, next president, Dr. John Perfect, he has already worked with the case of the Isham clinical e-course, and very soon it would be also being launched. In case of laboratory development of this pyramidal structure, at least we could do something in case of India that other than our reference laboratory, now we have eight additional reference laboratory in eight provinces of our country. We are trying to have reference laboratory in each province. Here we do the hands-on training, even for the clinician, we are doing the similar program, interactive session that is helping a lot. So friends, if I have to say six particular points which I'm targeting. One is in case of the awareness. Second important thing in case of laboratory infrastructure. Third in case of the training, both for the laboratory staff and clinician. Next is the research which is required for this developing country more and availability and affordability of antifungal drugs. I would say the three, three key players are Isham, Gafi, and ECMM. And these three players, they have got certain strength of each one. Gafi has the strength of advocacy, which they are using it, and they are also developing several educational uh, through the life 
that is the leading international fungal education program. ECNM has strength in case of the quality of laboratory development, and also they have initiated the program of global guidelines along with the defined body. ISAM, of course, is doing awareness, training, laboratory infrastructure, and also supporting the research. So these three together is really uh, make a change in this aspect. You can see with Gafi, this is the first thing which happened in case of WHO in the essential diagnostic list, so many things have been entered. Even in case of the WHO's GLASS program, that is the Global Antimicrobial Resistance Surveillance Program with the advocacy, now antifungal resistance surveillance has become a target thing. And recently, there is the completion of the pilot study in case of Candida. In case of ECMM, they are looking into the excellence center or quality center and working with ECMM, and we could see that different guidelines which have come up. One world, one guideline, which is the main motto of this aspect. Even when there is this outbreak, that is in case of this COVID, both for pulmonary aspergillosis and mucormycosis, immediate challenges which we have faced, depending upon that, we could develop a guidelines because of that. Recently, there is some work going on in case of fungal priority pathogen list. There also, I would say that Isham, ECMM, Gafi, even mycosis study group is participating. So this is the way already been there. And if you look into the mycosis study group, <coughs> their main strength is in case of the education. And then in case of the research, I would say that scholarship is very important championing the diagnosis prevention and treatment of fungal disease for doctors, patients, and caregivers. They are, this Dr. Fungus website is so important. Now, again, it's being revived. That would help a lot of people in this aspect. So if you see, in case of this collaboration between these two groups, education guidelines and research is always there. Mycosis study group, mainly the headquarters in USA. Because of that, their chance of doing advocacy is much more there. And Isham is already with Gafi and others doing the advocacy. In all this field, there is chance of collaboration. And most importantly, now, who is the president of Microsoft Study Group? It is John Parfait. And who is going to be the next president of Isham? It is John Parfait. So there is very easy that we have the chance of doing the collaboration between these two groups. Finally, I invite you, after a few weeks, will have this World Congress, this time in case of Delhi, India. I wish even those who have not registered, please register and attend the conference. Thank you for your kind attention.